All right, uh, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Today we shameless Don Shainus, who's fighting over in Australia at UFC 284, coming up in, in February. How are you, bro? I'm doing good, Toby. How are you? That's good, man. I'm good. Um, thanks for coming on, man. You're coming into enemy territory, chatting with an Aussie before you come over and fight one of our own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're uh, the first Aussie I'm speaking to, so this is going to be awesome. Uh, that's cool, man. Yeah, you just asked me if I know Jack Jenkins. Yeah, bro. I just talked to Jack, actually, um, would be about about 10 hours ago. Just had a chat with him. So I actually thought, oh, it's good if I have a chat with you, too. Beforehand, talking to him, I was looking at some of your fights and your interviews mm -hmm. and that, and then, and then I sent you the message and you replied pretty quickly. So it's good to get you on. Well, I'm happy to be on, so ask yeah. away. Let's go. No worries, bro. I was wondering what do you know about Australia, man. I'm coming over. It's a long way from where you are. So what do you have? What's your idea of what Australia is? I have no idea. I'm I'm excited to uh, make the trip. The trip's gonna suck, but um, you know what? I'm excited. I'm ex excited to take the culture in. I'm excited to interact with people. Obviously, I got a job to do. That that's my first priority. But just to see how things are, the way people are. Um, the culture there, the food. I'm so excited for the food, especially after weigh-ins. I want to try every weird thing you guys have. Uh, so, yeah, man, I couldn't be any more excited. Yeah, it's kind of funny, man. You're in, you're going over to Perth. To be honest, I've never even been to Perth. It's oh, no way. Country. And when you're over on the other side, like I'm completely on the other side, it takes like flying to another country the time, same time to get to Perth. So never been there. It's a pretty sleepy little town, man. It's not a really big one. Uh, but they got a lot of natural beauty there, like a lot of nice beaches and that. That's what I hear anyway. So that's something to check out. Well, I, I hear you got saltwater crocodiles, so I got to be careful on the beaches, right? <laughs> not over there, bro. Not in not in Perth. They got sharks, though. There's a few shark attacks every now and again over in Perth. But, you know, chance of getting eaten by a shark are pretty small. Yeah, I, we got sharks over here, too. So I'm, I'm not too worried about them. They got great whites over, over here in the Cape, so... Oh really? But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great whites over in over in WA as well, man. So yeah, you'd be familiar with them, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, a different part of the world to try, man. And how long are you there for? You got a week beforehand or something you mentioned, right? Yeah, so I leave the first, I get in on the third because you cross the international time zone border. Um hopefully that gives me plenty of time to acclimate. I, my weight's gonna spike up a little bit just because of um the flight, not being able to exercise for a day, but uh I'm taking all the precautions right now to make sure my weight's in check. I'm actually in a, in a fantastic spot weight wise. So super excited about that, but, uh, I'm going to be there till the end of the month. So I'm going to just going to spend the month in, uh, Australia. Cause after the fight, I think, cause my, my family's coming down too. So it's gonna be my mom, my mom and my dad. So, uh, they're coming down. Then I think afterwards we're going to Sydney for a couple of weeks. And, uh, my mom has a family friend that, uh, lives out there. So I'm going to crash on their couch and, uh, figure that out. But, First, first and foremost is business, you know? Now that's perfect, man, because a lot of people, like uh, a lot of the guys I talk to, they'll go somewhere, they'll finish a fight, they don't really think about it, and they go straight back home. So they kind of miss the opportunity to really, like, experience the country and that. So I think it's a good thing. It's a benefit of fighting that you get to travel in the first place, so why not take advantage of it, right? Trying to, you know. Um, I, I feel like I was pressured a little bit to fly home right away. Like, when, when we were booking my flights, it was such a pain in the ass because, like, all right, you're flying home the 12th. I'm like... I'm fighting the 12th and they're like, no, no, you're flying late at night. You're fighting early in the morning. I'm like, no, I like, what if I, want, I, I don't want to just fucking go there, fight and then hop on a plane. You know what I mean? Like right now in, in, in America, it's like, they my only job is this. They're my only job is this. It's not like I have to rush back to go to work or anything like that. So, um, this is my number one priority and, uh, I'm going to make it so. Yeah, bro, and you mentioned that your, your father's uh, kind of coming in your corner in a way, like uh, part of your corner sort of entourage, so that's a kind of cool experience for you guys to have, right? Yeah, yeah, he's going to be part of my entourage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the entourage. Mate, the entourage, you fall into everything. You said you're a entrepreneur now to don't. Uh, don <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, everything. It's funny, it's funny. So, yeah, yeah bro, you got to have some fun here and there, you know? That's it, man. So life of an MMA fighter, man, it's not easy. Uh, for you right now, things have been a bit disjointed by the sound of it, man. First of all, your um, gym kind of got disbanded, right? Glory MMA and Fitness with um, James Krause, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of got disbanded. So you've kind of moved, gone back home. You sound like you're training between gyms. That must have an effect on things, man. Like you're used to this certain thing, certain uh, set of guys that you're training with, certain, you know, you kind of get into a rhythm and that, and now that's kind of broken. Is that going to affect you at all? No, I don't think so. You know, uh, granted, for the last two years, I put in all the work. So as far as, you know, it affected me, I think it affected me early on in the camp where it's like, all right, I can't stay here. 
I got to make a decision what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to go find a new gym, but then understanding that like, I'm not going to have the relationships that I would at the, at, at a new gym. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going to work with my head coach from back home. Uh, we're going to get in fantastic shape. And then, uh, I'm going to figure out a fight camp. Granted, it took me a week, week and a half to figure out like my scheduling and who's on the, uh, at this gym on these days and whatnot. But once I, I settled into a schedule and a routine, it's been pretty easy to maintain. The only difference is there's a lot more driving now where it's like, uh, in Kansas city, there was, uh, a lot of downtime where I could actually relax and rest between sessions where it's like, all right, I know I got to do an AM session. So I drive half an hour to the gym, get my work in hour and a half. I'm out of there. I drive another half an hour home. You don't think about that half an hour each way. So there's an hour wasted that I'm spending on gas, which ain't the, the, ain't the end of the world, but it is what it is. And then it's like, all right, cool. I got a few hours to chill. Although I did burn an hour, I wouldn't, I would have an extra hour just to relax, eat, refuel, re rehydrate everything to go to my next session, which is, uh, the, my night sessions have mostly been in Boston. So, oh man, I don't know if you guys got traffic in fucking Australia, but Boston traffic's a bitch. Let me tell you, man, you'll, you'll be half an hour away. You'll be like 25, 30 miles away from something. It'll take an hour and a half, two hours to get to. And then you're paying for parking on top of it, which is another bitch. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you got to account for that. Obviously the ride home late at night's not, not too bad, but, uh, you know, it's just a lot more driving, a lot more me time where the time in Kansas city would be spent, you know, relaxing on the couch, maybe take a nap during the day. I just don't get that luxury anymore, but the focus is still there. I just got to be a little yeah. bit more dialed in. Yeah. I understand exactly what you mean. Just from a real working perspective, like not an MMA perspective. Yeah. I, I went from somewhere where I had to drive every day, 30 Ks and sometimes the traffic was bad to being somewhere I could see my work from the window and it's just completely different. You had that downtime, like you said, it adds up, man. It adds up, like you said, an hour a day, that's the seven hours a week potentially. It's like a, it's a lot of, lot of part of your week, right? So yeah, anyway, something to work on. <laughs> well, in the moment, you're not really thinking about it because you're listening to music, a podcast, whatever, you're yeah. on the phone, but yeah. uh, it definitely adds up over time for sure. That's it, man. So what's your thoughts on the whole James Krause thing, man, out of interest? Because uh, he just, he was like in the public eye everywhere. He saw him all over the internet and then suddenly bang, he's gone, you know, and, and obviously lots of criticism online. I haven't heard anything from him out there. I just heard Dana and yeah. from people talking about things. Well, you know what? It, it, the whole situation sucks. You know what I mean? Like the, this affects so many people that have no idea what's going on. You know, it's affecting my career. Uh, obviously I'm trying to do what I can, you know, but it, as far as me personally, um, I don't look at him any differently. You know what I mean? Like, uh, m all the, all the speculations and, and everything that's coming out, like in two months, I learned more than I did in the last two years. I've learned so much from this guy and he he's given me so much and, and asked that I, I, for a few things in return. And the only thing that he asked was for me to shut up, listen and work hard. And, you know, if I just put my nose to the mats and, uh, you know, work my ass off, you know, he's giving me a place to stay. And, uh, he, he was very good to me. So yes, th this whole situation fucking sucks. But, uh, my opinion of the man doesn't change at all. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is like, even just before all that shit happened, I was telling people like the two the two fight analysts I like to listen to is James Krause and um, what's the other fellow that English uh, guy I've just forgotten it's late it's early in the morning here that other fellow that used to fight in UFC Dan Hardy they're the two ones I like to watch Dan Hardy mm -hmm. and James Krause I just like his analysis incredible analysis also gives you some good uh, general betting tips and that on on his show before and now he's gone so I lost yeah. all the guys I like listening to so it's a shame it, it, it's crazy how much I've learned about the game just from listening and paying attention. And, uh, you know, obviously his analysis is we're fucking spot on with so many fights, but, uh, it like, I, I got a behind the scenes view of how different teams approach fights. You know, I used to just think like, I ain't going to watch any film. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to rebut. Like, like uh, I started reading books. I started watching film of my opponents, you know, so many uh, little things that I would do, that, that I'd notice had track for success, I, I learned there, you know? That's good, man, yeah. Anyway, I don't know what'll happen in the future, but you never know. Never say never, you might always get the chance to train again. Who knows how things will span out later, right? I don't know, don't know. Don't know. 
Yeah, man. So UFC 284, uh, Sunday 12th of February in Perth. It's a big card, man. Like I said, some great Aussies on the show. I'm, I'm really pumped to watch it. Uh, a couple of Kiwis as well. Um, your opponent, Far Jack Jenkins, man, just like yourself, he was a champ in a previous organization. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, man? I love this fight. Um, I, I've seen him fight. I saw him fight live in Vegas. Uh, yeah. So my fight week against Sadiq Yusuf, he fought in the Contender Series the final week. And uh, I got I scored a ticket to that, and I actually got to see him fight live. Um, looked looked in that fight like he was a, a grappler. You watch them film though; he is not a grappler at all. I I, I don't think he's going to want to grapple this fight, but you never know. Uh, you'll see wherever the fight takes you. You you never can truly, you know, know exactly what's going to happen. You can have an idea what's going to happen, but tends things tend to never turn out how you expect them, especially in fighting. So. Um, watching a lot of his previous fight, big calf kicker, uh, big body kick with the switch, clean strikes. Uh, I think this is going to be a perfect matchup for me. I'm, I'm a grinder. I'm, uh, you know, I like being in close or either too far away. So we'll, we'll see, you know, with, is his striking going to hold up to my awkward style and my ground pressure? Yeah, man. I heard you mentioned that, uh, you talked about the cadence of his punches that you don't think the cadence changes too much and that he backs in a straight line what else did you say oh something else about the grappling as well yeah so i can kind of see what you're getting at like the the grinding part you mentioned it sounds like uh set it up for a you know kind of a grinder versus a striker sort of match but we'll see right of course. you never like you said you never know where the fight's going to take you you never know you know i could say one thing and he could shoot on me right away like uh even with my last fight against the last thing i thought we were going to do is grapple or have him initiate the grapple so it it is what it is but uh I'm so excited for this. I think this is such a good matchup. You know, we're getting two completely different styles of uh, MMA toss into one, two guys early off in their career. And uh, this should be fun, man. I know I'm going to take out an Aussie, but, uh, you know, it's it's going to be cool. There's no love loss on my end. Yeah, bro. And uh, do you feel any sort of pressure? I mean, that the first fight, like you, you mentioned that it was super late notice, so you didn't really have time to prepare. Obviously, the fight didn't go like you would have liked to. It went pretty quickly, and, and you got finished. Uh, you've got that added pressure of trying to, like, you know, perform better in your second UFC fight, the pressure of switching gyms, the pressure of having to travel so far. It's the first time you've fought so far away from home, I'd imagine. Um, is that sort of something that's weighing on you at all? Uh, there's always pressure, right? It, it's how you deal with the pressure. And there's going to be things that you can control, and there's going to be things that you can't now. Let me tell you, life has its way of throwing shit in your face and you have to deal with it, you know? And uh, I think that with enough time, th there's no obstacle I can't overcome. So I don't think a flight or an opponent or anything is going to be able to stop me, especially with the amount of time they gave us to prepare. Yeah, bro. I heard you also mention about a real serious injury you had before, something about a vertebrae shattering or something like that. Oh, so yeah. Pretty serious, bro. Like, when was that? That was a long time ago? Or, or Shit, what? yeah. So, uh, damn, you really did your research. So, 2018, uh, I broke my neck. Oh, shit. I was fighting uh, at the wrong weight class. What, what ended up happening was my original opponent pulled out. I ended up taking a short notice fight against someone in a much heavier weight class, or much heavier, at 55. Uh, I'm not a true 55er. So, um, I didn't know, but I was having some like shoulder pain. I didn't think anything of it. It was, it wasn't like anything that I couldn't deal with, but as you wind down the closer to the end of camp, you know, you're kind of easing off the gas right now. Like you're not hard sparring, like hard, hard sparring two weeks out. So I didn't think anything of it. I thought like, oh, my body's going to be fine. And I actually felt great going into the fight. You know, I was getting a little bit of extra TLC as far as massage and, and therapy and uh, PT and all that stuff. But I had no idea I was as injured as I was. So what ended up happening was I uh, I took the fight. I ended up fighting 15 minutes with a broken neck. And, and uh, I knew something was seriously wrong at the end of the first round because I, I, I had a deep, deep guillotine. He got saved by the belt. But um, walking back to... Uh, Walking back to the corner, my 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 arm, I was in so much pain, and it, I, I had to make a decision on that walk back because my coach is talking to me. He's giving me instructions, like, do I vocalize, like, yo, I'm in pain? Because at the end of the day, no one gives a fucking shit, you know. But if I told him I was in as much pain as he was, he would have thrown the towel. But I'm also not a quitter, so so I didn't say anything. 
And uh, pretty much for the next two rounds, I fought with one arm and uh, I ended up losing a 29-28 super close decision against a guy that that's black belt in jiu-jitsu who couldn't finish me with the rear naked choke. But yeah, I, oh, shit. Sorry about that. But yeah, I fought 15 minutes with a broken neck and uh, lost the decision. I ended up needing surgery. What happened was my vertebrae shattered, which ruptured my disc, which pinched the nerve. So like uh, I have nerve damage. So like at the time, my fingers felt different. Like I couldn't feel my hand, my fingers, L- little shit. Um, the surgery sucked. That took me out for a year competing. Um, I had uh, to have vocal like voice therapy because for a year and a half, one of my vocal cords wasn't working. So I sounded like this for like a year and a half and uh, it would throw people off completely. It, like over time, it's gotten better, especially with the voice therapy and whatnot. I, I don't, but I couldn't even tell you if this is my actual voice, my original yeah. voice or yeah. a new voice that I've developed. Yeah, that's interesting, man. Jesus. Now it's a tough game, man. Like uh, the body's all healed up and, and functioning now. That was a few years ago, right? So, yeah, you're feeling better? All good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had, I think, more pro fights since I got injured than before I got injured. So, luckily, it happened four or five years ago. So, dealing yeah. with it now. But the other thing that kind of stuck out, man, it was the funny little story of you hiding little do- toy dinosaurs everywhere. Oh, yeah, dude. People <laughs> love that. <laughs> I was thinking maybe you should get yourself a packet of little kangaroos or something and hide them around Australia. I don't know. This sounds Yo, funny. I'm <laughs> curious. Can you eat kangaroo? Yeah, you can, man. Actually, funnily enough, I was in China one day. I was going to a barbecue, and I thought I'd better go and get some meat. I walked into a shop in China, and for some reason, it had Australian kangaroo snakes no in there, so I ate it there. But I've eaten it in Australia. It's not really common, like... Like people don't usually go around and get a kangaroo steak. They'll usually get a nice, you know, proper quality um, beef steak. But but uh, there are some available and some restaurants serve it, yeah. No yeah. way. That That's wild. I definitely got to try some of that. I know you guys got yeah. that Australian Wagyu, so I definitely going to have yeah. some of that too. Yeah, there's plenty of good uh, beef over there, bro. So I think that's what most people go for. <laughs> it's not what uh, what should I try out there? I don't know, bro. Just have a look and see what's available. Like I said, I don't really know in Perth what they got, bro. So suss it out, man. It's probably similar. Yeah. Well, also, if I'm going to Australia and there's like one thing that I'm supposed to try, what is it? Ah, uh, let me think, bro. I don't know. I'd probably just say, yeah, just maybe like try some sort of barbecue or something, man. If, <clears> if there's anyone you know over there that's doing that, because you can yeah, try a sample, get some nice beef steak, some some type of beef steak on the barbie, bro. You know, it seems to be a <laughs> on the barbie. Thing. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it that's it bro yeah man so um wanted to get your quick prediction before we head off bro like what's your prediction for the fight from your perspective oh, i think this is going to be an absolute war i think we're going to be throwing and uh, i think we're both going to throw hard and i don't see this going to decision so i'm putting everything on the line i'm sure jack is too you know i know he's coming in prepared i know he's coming in with a game plan i got the same thing going on and uh i think this is going to be an absolute firefight and probably not a fight of the night yeah, yeah. No, sounds good, bro. What, but what do you think is going to happen? That's a that's a nice uh, Switzerland answer. What's your what's your idea of what you'd like to do? Bro, oh, I, I think he's going to come out. I think he's going to try and blast calf kicks. I think I'm going to check one or two of them, and he's going to stop. Uh, I'm probably going to catch one of his body kicks, thigh kicks to the body, take him down, grind him out. Yeah. Bro, that's good. Good that uh, you, you're confident, bro, and I, I wish you all the best with your fight, bro. Obviously, I'm a, a Far Jack Jenkins fan. So I can't, uh, I can't say anything against my boy. I, I kind of, I am hoping he wins, but best of luck to you, man. I hope you enjoy the trip over to Australia and um, yeah, get to take in the, the place a bit and enjoy your stay, bro. I appreciate it, man. Like, I know you're, you're a Jack Jenkins fan. That's cool. But after this fight, you could be a Don Shanus fan too. That's it, man. I mean, you're giving me a time and yeah, we all get to, you know, see you guys straight down. So it'll be good. All right, bro. Thanks for your time Again. anyway. And yeah, all the best with this fight and, and your future career and everything, man. Hey, Toby, thank you so much for having me on.